this video, I'm going to be replacing the passenger door window regulator on my sister's car. Since it was Thanksgiving and my sister was visiting, I agreed to do the window regulator for her because she really doesn't like working with glass. After a quick unboxing of the new window regulator, it was time to get started. First, I need to remove two screws. One is up at the door release handle and the other is in the pocket of the door pull handle. Next, using some upholstery tools, I carefully located and popped out the plastic retaining clips. And I almost forgot to remove this plastic piece. So as I struggle to remove the door panel, what you want to do is remove this triangular shaped panel right up here. Now this is held on by two plastic retaining clips. Once it's gone, then the door panel comes off really easily. Once the panel is off the door, you need to remove the power cable that goes to the window and door locks. This is the door panel as seen from the back side. These are the eight locations where the plastic retaining clips hold the panel to the door. And you can see one is missing and one was broken. This is the piece I mentioned you should remove before removing the door panel. Now I did get the panel off without breaking anything, but you should definitely do this piece first. Okay, at this point there are several different things that need to be removed from the window regulator, but it doesn't matter which order you do it in. I'm going to start with the door lock and handle assembly. There are three screws that hold this to the door and the window regulator. So once they're removed, we need to also remove the cables that interface with them. Simply pop them out of the plastic bracket and then rotate them forward and lift up and they will come free. At this point, I actually made another little mistake. You actually want to push these little rubber covers back into the door and not pull them out like I did. So later on, I had to go and correct this. Now there are two more power cords that need to be unplugged, the one to the Windows motor and the one to the speaker. Next I'm going to remove the speaker. There are four nuts that secure to the bolts that the speaker mounts to. Once you get the nuts free, the speaker is going to be probably pretty tight on those bolts, so just gently wiggle it back and forth until you get it off. There are several plastic clips that secure the power cables to the window regulator, so you need to pop these out as well. And lastly, make sure to remove these two rubber gaskets because you will need them on the new regulator unless you happen to buy new ones. Now the window needs to be removed from the two metal brackets that it sits in. To do this, the window needs to be carefully forced down into the door until it's about halfway open. The window will need to be brought down until the brackets are aligned with the two holes that are revealed when you remove the rubber gaskets. I'm actually doing this project because the left bracket is completely broken and no longer attached to the window. So the only thing holding the window in place is this right side bracket. Now luckily the right side bracket was tight enough to hold the window into its proper place. But if it had been a little bit looser, it's possible that the window could have dipped on the front end down into the door, causing a misalignment of the entire window and possibly even falling out 
part of the back bracket and then crashing down into the door and breaking. As you loosen the bolt on the bracket, you'll free up tension on the window and be able to pull the window out of the bracket. At that point, you may want to have two people on hand, one to hold the window and one to deal with the bracket so you don't risk the window possibly getting away from you and falling and of course breaking in the door. Once the window is free, you need to lift it all the way up until it's in the closed position. At that point, I use duct tape to hold it in place. The window seal actually puts a fair amount of tension on the window, making it fairly difficult to move. So between the seal and the duct tape, it wasn't going anywhere. With the window now secured in the closed position, it's time to remove the eight bolts that secure the regulator to the door. Now pull the regulator towards the inside of the car and it will come out. There's one power cable which runs through the regulator and plugs in inside of the door which will need to be unplugged. This is where I messed up earlier in the video when I should have pushed the rubber pieces back through the regulator instead I pulled them out so now I'm having to correct that. As you can see the little plastic bracket that has to slide out of the door to get the regulator free is kind of in the way of getting these rubber boots sacked through the regulator but just work it carefully so that you don't damage the rubber and then you can get the cable out of the regulator. Now that the old regulator is uninstalled I can get to work on installing the new one. The new regulator comes with a metal and plastic plastic bracket that need to be attached and the reason why this is done is because it's easier for them to package it if it's not attached because it makes the box smaller. Now it's pretty easy to attach them, you simply look at the old regulator to figure out where exactly they go. What was a little weird was that on the old regulator both of these pieces were attached using pop rivets, but on the new one they sent two pop rivets to attach the metal bracket and two screws to attach the plastic one. If you don't have a pop rivet gun you could attach the metal bracket using some metal screws or even possibly using some bolts and nuts. Now just be careful and make sure that whatever you choose to attach it with they are short enough that they will not interfere with the window. At this point the new regulator is ready to be installed and I simply need to reverse the process that I used to get the old one out. Make sure you've got the plastic bracket lined up with the slots it needs to go into. It's very easy to completely miss them and think that you have the regulator properly mounted when you in fact don't. If you are having difficulty trying to get the plastic bracket into its proper position you can remove Remove the exterior door handle. This will give you the ability to look into the door and see as the plastic bracket goes in and then you can reach in with like a flat blade screwdriver and essentially manipulate and press on the plastic bracket to guide it properly into position. So another little mistake that I made, which I didn't catch right away, was I forgot to remove the bolts that the speaker mounts to from the old regulator because they need to go into the new one because they don't ship it with any new bolts. So you can still get them in if you've already got the regulator in place in the door. It's just a little more difficult and you might have to remove one or two of the mounting bolts that hold the regulator to the door and then you can slip those mounting bolts for the speaker into place. At this point, everything that got removed from the old regulator to get it out needs to be attached to the new regulator. Now, I would recommend that you actually save this part for last and you get the window reattached first because that is the main priority. The only reason I didn't do that is because I needed help doing it and my helper was my dad and my dad had stopped for lunch at that point in the project. So I figured I'd reattach everything first while waiting on him and then we could get the window once he was done. So as I loosen the bolt on the bracket so that the bracket will open up to be able to receive the window, you can see that the bracket can actually move kind of in and out. And this is why you really need two people while trying to reattach the window because it's very easy to lower the window and actually miss the bracket completely because it moved on you and then you think maybe you've just set it down in there and you've completely missed the brackets and if you were to let go of the window, that would be a bad day. As my dad manipulates the window, I'm going to make sure that it gets seated properly into the brackets and then once it's in the both sides, I'll tighten down the bolt and secure it in place. 
Be careful not to over tighten the bolts so you don't risk damaging the glass. Make sure you test the window before moving on by turning the car's power on and running it all the way up and all the way down, making sure that it moves easily without any issues and that it's able to properly close in all areas and properly go all the way down and that you don't have any of the windows sticking out when it's supposed to be down. If your window works without any issue, then go ahead and reinstall all of your remaining parts. I hope you find this video informative and helpful if you have to do this project. Make sure to click that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up and we'll see you next time on the DIY Grunt.